In the headlines, power supply restored after national grid collapse. Family of Kaduna rape victim seeks justice. Traders rush for Jigawa millet as harvest season sets in. And away from Nigeria, rival governments cooperate to aid Libya's flawed victims as misery piles on. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I am Nten Ekpan. And on the news in full, power supply has been restored after the national electricity grid collapsed on Thursday. The grid collapse resulted in a massive loss of supply to power distributors nationwide. The transmission company of Nigeria, TCN, General Manager, Public Affairs in Didimba said the grid restoration nationwide is in progress and has reached advanced stages with power supply now available in the east north, central and south. The transmission company of Nigeria TCN had earlier confirmed the collapse of the national grid but assured that efforts are in tap gear to fix the problem. While explaining the reason for the collapse, the TCN said it occurred after a fire incident on Kainji Jeba 330 KV Line 2. Bar added that the matter has been investigated with a view to forestalling future occurrence and also to strengthen the grid. Our residents of Zangon Kabuka community in Batagawa, local government area of Kashin State, say they, are, they have no running water, schools, or any social amenities that can guarantee the sustainable socioeconomic well being of residents there. To this end, they want the state government to come to their rescue through the provision of basic social amenities. Abdullahi Yamade visits the community less than a kilometre from the town to speak to residents on some of the challenges bedeviling the community. The report. This is the only access road leading to Zangon Kabukawa village, which since the return of democracy in 1999 has been without basic social amenities. The situation leaves the residents stagnated. For instance, the community has been without school, clean water, health care facility, electricity and other basic necessities despite their closeness to Batagarawa town, the local government headquarters and the state capital, Kazina. These residents at least need a primary school for their children, access road to transport farm produce and water for animals and domestic purposes for now. Zangon Kabukawa has a population of over 5,000 people and is without even a school. As you can see, we have to send our children to Batagarawa Primary School. Our greatest challenge is this stream, which often prevents our children from attending when it rains. This overhead tank has been there without a functional borehole. An attempt to provide the village with water has not seen the light of the day. How do we get here despite our numerous challenges? Anyway, you are welcome. Please help us to tell Governor Diko Umaru Rada to come to our rescue. He is our last hope. The residents believe democracy has failed to change their fortunes for the better after decades of sufferings. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Trust Television News, Kazana. Operatives of Operation Safe Haven on Wednesday said they have captured the suspected killer of one Dorothy Jonathan of Afana village of Zangon Katab, local government area of Kaduna State. The woman was killed on Friday in southern Kaduna area of Kaduna State while fetching firewood in her farm. In a statement by the spokesperson of the operation, Captain Oya James, he said the suspect, Lot Dauda, who confessed to the 
crime alongside an accomplice who is now at large who was arrested through a manhunt launched by troops of Operation Safe Heaven who acted immediately based on credible intelligence obtained. Captain James said Operation Safe Heaven will continue to do everything possible to bring all perpetrators of the crime to justice in Southern Kaduna and its environs. A young lady in Kaduna is demanding justice against a commercial tricycle rider whom she alleges raped her while taking her to an agreed destination. The, suspect, the suspected rapist, she said, threatened her life before sexually assaulting her. Trustee Wies Bello has more on this report. Aisha said she took the tricycle from a bus stop to Namdia Zukwe Expressway, popularly known as Bakirua, but along the way, the suspect diverted his way to the scene of the alleged rape. I stopped him on the road around 9 p.m. and asked him to take me to Ebakenroa. When he started moving, he pleaded with me that he would deliver a message somewhere. Then he would take me to my destination. She said the tricycle rider threatened her with knife before raping her. He stopped and entered one garage and later came out with knife in his hand and instructed me to enter a bus packed in the garage or else he would kill me. I entered screaming it was already late and was about to win. He held my truth. I was begging him but he would not listen and threatened to kill me. He then raped me. The suspect Aminusani confirmed that the victim was his passenger. He narrated his own side of the story. I met her on the road and she stopped and asked me to take her to Bakirwa. When we started going, she asked me whether I am married. I asked her why and she said she had a quarrel with her parent that she wants to pass the night at my place. A security man also accused of connabbing with Aminu to rap the victim speaks. <laughs> he came with the lady and told me that she has misunderstanding with her parent. He asked me to allow her sleep in our place, which I agreed. I was trying to change my clothes. When I came back, I saw her in a terrible mood. I demanded to know what happened, and she told me that he raped her, and she has never done such a thing. I removed my cloth in her front, but I didn't do anything to her. The family of the victim has reported the matter to the Rigasa Community Security Outfit, who arrested the suspect and handed them to the police for further investigation. <laughs> We heard the report that a lady was raped at a private parking lot and this is the knife he threatened her with before raping her. He told us that this is not the first time they have been doing it with the set security guard at the parking lot. We are handing them over to the police. Aisha and her family are now demanding justice against the suspected rapist of their data as police investigate the case. Bella Musa, Trust TV News Kaduna. A major state government has announced plans to reopen 11 out of the 42 public schools shut across the state due to insecurity. And recall that the state government had shut the 42 schools in 2021 at the peak of the frequent invasion of some boarding schools across the state, but later reopened some and shut the 11 which were more prone to insecurity. Mostly affected were female students across the state, especially the kidnap of 99 girls from Sali Hutanko Ismaila School, Tegina in Refi local government area. Despite all steps taken to secure their release by the state government, local governments and communities involved, the students, mostly female and children, spent almost 90 days in the kidnappers' den. Some of the schools to be reopened are in Wushishi, Lavon, and Gurara local government areas of the state. 
The Commissioner for Basic and Secondary Education in that state, Hadiza Mohammed, who held an emergency meeting with major stakeholders in the education sector in Mina on Wednesday, said the decision to reopen the schools was as a result of improved security in the affected communities. And staying with education, schools across Nasserwe State have resumed for the 2023-2024 academic session. The resumption of academic activities means parents and guardians have to struggle to adapt to the current economic climate with limited financial resources. Trustee Riz Abubakar Abdullah is sent in this report as presented from our studios. Though not all students have resumed for academic activities, a significant number of teachers were on the ground in most schools visited by Trust Television. In one of the schools visited, Trust TV witnessed that lessons were ongoing as students were seen either listening, asking, or responding to questions from the teachers. Some of these students speak. And my expectation from teachers is to make sure that we learn well and have knowledge of every subject the teachers are speaking. And my expectation from my teachers is to in fact, qualitative education which will help us to be future leaders and nation builders. The students who appreciated the effort of their teachers also challenged them to be role models to them through their behavior. Samuel Kagmut is the vice principal of government secondary school, Lafia East. He confirmed the resumption of students and teachers in the school and challenged parents to send their children who are yet to resume to school. Uh, from all indications, staffs and students are on ground um, we have started our classes immediately without any waste of time and we urge parents that are they should inform their ward that are still at home to resume to school because lessons has been commenced in earnest Vice principal advised the students to appreciate the efforts of their parents by putting in their best in their academic pursuit. A parent who also speaks on the resumption says the removal of full subsidy by the government has affected their fee payment plans. Children have resumed school and as parents we are expected to pay their school fees but because of subsidy removal, but because of subsidy removal challenge, which affect all economic activities, people have no money in their hands, and we parents are facing serious challenge in payment of school fees. What remains for us is that we resort to praying on daily basis for God intervention. He called on governments to look into the plight of the people and introduce policies and programs that will reduce the hardship on the citizens. And as to staying in Nasarawa State, the Governorship Election Petitions Tribunal sitting in Lafayette, the state capital, has reserved judgment in the petition filed by the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party, David Umbugadu, challenging the declaration of Governor Abdullahi Sule as a winner of the March 18 election in the state. The PDP governorship candidate in the March 18, 2023 election in Nashua State had shortly after the election asked the tribunal via his petition to declare him the winner of the election on the grounds that he scored the highest votes cast in the ballot. But in their final addresses, counsel to the Independent National Electoral Commission, Ayanek Moody Diko, that of the governor, Abdullahi Sule, Sule Wale Alanopeku, and their all progressives Congress counterpart, APC Hassan Lehman, all asked the tribunal to strike out the petition for lack of merit. Chairman of the tribunal, Ezekiel Ajayi, after listening to addresses from all the councils, reserved judgment to a later date. Now, there was excitement on the street of Asaba, the Delta State Capital, on Thursday as residents of Anyocha or Shimili Federal constituency celebrated the appeal court judgment reversing the tribunal victory of Ndudi Lubelu of the People's Democratic Party, the PDP. In the judgment, the appeal court upheld the victory of Ngozi Okole of the Labour Party. Elumelu of the People's Democratic Party was declared winner of the February 25 election by the tribunal after it voided the victory of Ngozi Okuli of the Labour Party. 
are delivering judgment this Thursday. The appeal court fought to the tribunal for avoiding Okoli's election and proceeded to dismiss the petition filed by Elumelu. The Court of Appeal agreed with lawyer to the Labour Party, Mahmoud Marga GSAN, that contrary to the findings of the tribunal, Okoli was duly nominated and sponsored by his party, the Labour Party, and that he resigned his appointment as senior special assistant to the Delta State Government as required by the Constitution. Now, speaking on behalf of the residents of Aniocha, or Shimili Federal Constituency, Maduka Abu Chuku Inasaba said the appeal court judgment is a blessing from God, adding that it was high time. The constituency tried fresh hands. You're watching news update on Trust Television. Coming up after the break. Changing phase of Asaba town with solid wastes. More news when we return to stay with us. Hello guys, welcome to Showtime. I don't even believe there's any other industry that will handle me like a movie industry. Yeah. I told you I'm deep and soaked into movie industry. In secondary school, um, there is Fatima and Mariam Adamu. And then we we sort of took the names of the characters in that cartoon. I think entertainers themselves need to wake up and smell the coffee and say, Diversification is the way to go. Yes, you can sing or you know make great beats or you know act in a film, but what else can you do? I became one of the best makeup artists in Nigeria. I won um, I'm our award best makeup artist. Do you think we are I'm not a fool do when I talk to you? You start straight. Attention! Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're watching the news update on Trust Television. A recap of our top stories. Power supply restored after national grid collapse. And family of cardinal rape victim seeks justice. So more news now on businessmen are coming 
to various markets in Jigawa State to buy millet from farmers for onward delivery to Niger Republic. These markets include Shuarin Market in Kiwaya local government area, Kuchungu Market in Toria local government area, Lamadori Market in Labaratambari Gwani in Duse local government area, Kiwaya Market among others in that state. Now the largest Matagari market are the Nigeria Niger border serves as a place where the millet is stored and exported to Niger Republic. Bashi Badamasi, who is doing a birdie change business at the market to Delhi Trust, the market is always filled up with millet and sold at low prices. Suleiman Muhammad, a farmer in Juicy local governor, said he sold his millet two weeks ago at 715 naira per mutu, but when he went back to the market this week, the price has skyrocketed to 1,100 per mutu. Manu said he sold his greens to buy something in his house, but now the story has changed because, as he said, I cannot buy the millet anymore. Now, as about the Delta State Capital is experiencing indiscriminate dumping of refuse on the popular Nebisi Road. Jonathan Awanye reports that the trend is now becoming the source of worry for residents. Let's take a look. Nebisi, a major road in Asaba, is no longer a good site. The road has suddenly become a refuse dump of some sort, with bags of refuse, now a common sight. It is a situation that has become a source of worry for some residents who now worry that the practice could cause an epidemic if not addressed immediately. So with the way where this thing then it not come make sense. And uh, if this thing, if they don't take any action between now and weekend, I think as about go dirty. That's the thing where they are now, the dirty no good. Because as they are now, the environment is very dirty and it's smelling everywhere. Put these things in place. Bring measures so that whatever that throws can or any debts outside it should be fined for it. On the part of government, it is not for lack of thoughtfulness, but the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Environment, Dr. Mini Osaji, says that government and the waste evacuators are having some challenges. Foremost, it started with residents who did not have subscription with the private sets of participants. So rather than paying between 1,005 and 2,005 so that the private sector participants can come and cut away their refuse, they chose to come out in the night and go and dump it. She however suggests ways residents can mitigate the situation in the meantime. So before I dump my waste and keep it for the private se sector participants responsible for cutting away my own household waste, I first remove all the plastic bottles and I recycle the plastic bottles. We have a number of plastic uh, recycling companies. I also remove paper, I remove cartons, and all those things, you open a packet of uh, cereal, I remove it. So I pack all those things and I store them, and when they have um, reached a sizable quantity, I take them to the integrated waste management facility, and there, I put it and they actually give me remuneration. So the question now is how do I get every resident in Asaba to do this while we are trying to deal with the problem of ensuring the dump site is functioning. It is expected that the eyesore is not allowed to linger in the interest of the people's health as cleanliness is said to be next to godliness. Jonathan Awanye, Trust TV News, Asaba. Away from Nigeria, domestic efforts to aid survivors are on despite political fractions as focus is on assessing people in need. It has now been more than three days since Libya's eastern port city of Turner was practically flattened as Storm Daniel unleashed its wrath on a city that was mostly fast asleep. Usma al Hasuda, a 52 year old driver, has been searching for his wife and five children since the storm struck on Sunday night, busting dams and the city, the resulting flood engulfing everything in their path. Now, more than 6,000 people are dead, and that number is likely to double or even quadruple. Islamic Relief warned late on Wednesday. The Libyan Red Crescent said on Thursday morning that a further 10,000 people are missing. Italy that could be higher. Now, before arriving in Libya, Storm Daniel had struck Greece, killing 15 people and causing widespread destruction. 
and in sports nightwear, Super Eagles goalkeeper Francis Uzo has secured a contract extension with the Cyprus League side Omonia Nicosia. Now, since arriving in the Cypriot League, Uzoho has become a household name, putting up an impressive performance for the club. The club on Wednesday stated that Uzoho had been rewarded with a four-year contract extension that will end in 2027. Uzoho's best performance in the colour of the club was the UEFA Europa League match against Manchester United at Old Trafford. And with that, we have come to the end of news update on Trust TV this hour. Do not forget to follow us across all our social media platforms and join our YouTube live stream for more news and programs as well as documentaries. I am Nintendo Kang. Many thanks for watching. Bye bye.